Welcome to the Barman TV. In our quest to find West Africa's top bartender, we started this journey with 85 bartenders and cut down to 21 for boot camp. 12 made it to the show, and now we are with the final three. My name is Joel Brian Mensah. I want to be the barman. Joel, he's an all-round bartender. You know, his product knowledge, his technique, his skill. For me, I wasn't so sure if Joel was going to be in the final three. I don't know what it was. He's got an exceptional understanding of cocktails. He's not a risk taker. He thinks through his idea. He's also very meticulous. And with Joel, he's very steady, and I see that he's actually becoming a bit more experimental. I'm Patience and I'm from Accra, Ghana. I do work with guys in the bar. I love working around with guys. I love making drinks. Her flavor profile is unbelievable. She's an incredible lady. She's had an incredible journey. She's the only female here. She has the most attention to detail than any of the bartenders that were in the contest. She's putting more of herself into the, the drinks and her cocktails. My name is Johnson. I came from uh, Ghana, Accra to be precise, hoping to be the barman. Johnson, incredible. He's embodying everything about the show. You know, he's got a strong character. You know, his, his character talks to you. Some people might say slightly arrogant. That's not a bad thing if you play it the right way. On the good side, he's a performer. So he, he comes to the stage like a rock star and he takes over. Johnson, I think his presentation is fantastic. They tend to be sometimes a little over the top. It's unfortunate that certain parts of the world don't see the potential that Africa has. And right now, um, the, the contestants went above and beyond and they could have been in any world-class competition. The world is open to them. It's not just Africa, it's not just the countries that they're coming from. And I think they're going to push the boundaries and take our flavors out into the rest of the world. Already we've showed them that there is a career path. Now we're going to empower them to, to, with the tools that they need to go on that journey. So, so the winner of the Batman TV is pretty much going to spend the next year just traveling around the world you know, uh, broadening their horizon. And that to me is more value than any amount of money that you could put on a prize. The final prize being... Learn to be the best bartender you can be. Four-week course at the European Bartender School in Cape Town, two days mixology course in London, and a barista course in Rome. Their final challenge is the legacy cocktail and to mentor them, Colin Appiah will take them through their legacy. Growing up, I never ever thought that I would be the bartender that I am today. I used to work with uh, Jamie Oliver, the Naked Chef, and I asked him, why did you um, enter this industry? He said, "This is Colin, life's about special moments. And he said, nine times out of ten, they're based around food and drink. So if I can in any way influence that moment, he said, then I've kind of done my job. I just thought, wow. Contestants, good morning, how are you? Fine, man. Yeah, fine. Awesome, awesome. It is so good to see you this morning here in Lagos. It's the final round today. This is the Lagos final. It's a really, really important uh, day today. I'm Colin Asari up here. I've done what you guys are doing now. I'm really, really proud to be here to watch and help mentor you the legacy brand today. Now, what defines legacy for me is a cocktail that stands the test of time, a cocktail that transcends the four walls of the bar that you live in, yeah? If I expect to see some kind of showmanship, the bar is our stage, so we need to set it as such of our legacy. This is one of the most important challenges that I think you're gonna have in a very long time. Think through how you're going to best represent yourself through your cocktail. There's one thing I also wanna add is the presentation of your cocktail is really, really important. Let us know the story. I wanna know the story of why you pick the ingredients that you pick. Do they really represent you? Are they really the best ingredients and the best structure for a cocktail that in 10 years time, someone can say, yeah. I wish you all the best. Make today really count. I sense that today is gonna to be the beginning of an amazing journey for all of you. Irrespective of who wins, okay? Thank you. All right, thank you.
and welcome back to the Barman TV, the grand finals. First there were 86, made it down to 21, then there were 12, then there were 5. Tonight, just three remain. The legacy cocktail that you're going to make, I was, um, I was actually wondering, what was the base ingredient of the uh, cocktail? The base, I'm using uh, rum. We oh, sell you're white using rum. rum. Yeah. You're using a white rum. I'm using a white rum. Any white rum in particular? Yeah, I'm using Bacardi white so rum. You're using because, Bacardi. Uh, yeah, it's one of the best in the world. Yeah, so I'm not adding a lot of ingredients. I'm adding ginger bisap syrup or spicy bisap syrup. It's easy to make. Just the bisap or hibiscus. Bisap. Yeah. There's another name for it, no? Sobolo. So that's yeah, it. Sobolo. God, I keep So uh, I'm using the <laughs> Sobolo. I'm using the Sobolo. Yeah. This is just a Sobolo with syrup and ginger. OK, beautiful. That's it. So you've had the opportunity to try classic cocktails like the Sazerac and uh, the Negroni yeah. this week. What elements of those cocktails build into the structure of the cocktail that you're making for your legacy? For my legacy cocktail, I'm introducing a bitters. Is just... it a local bitters or something you've made? Uh, yourself. I've actually brought some more bitters for you to try as yes, well. Yes, yes. I'll play around with your bitters. OK. And are you using any other ingredients that I need to know? OK, uh, I'm using a pineapple. Because I told you, I already feel like a king. You know, the pineapple has the... <laughs> The pineapple has the, the yeah, crown. The crown. Yes, yeah, so I already feel like a king because I'm in the finals anyway. Well done. Good day. My name is Joe Brian Mensa and I'm from Ghana. Before I talk about my drink, I want to say a little story behind it. How I began bartending. I was in school. I was raised by a single mom. She tried as much as possible to get me everything I wanted. I didn't get everything I needed, so I thought of learning a trade. I just told her, Mom, I want to learn a trade. She said no. I said, I have to do something, mom. She said, go ahead. So I applied for a job in one of the best bars back in the years, like six years back, which was the Lexington in Accra. And I was enrolled in as a cleaner or a glass washer. I washed glasses for barely one year to make ends meet. I didn't know anything about bartending. I just wanted to get some money to take care of myself. My drink is very simple. It has the sweetness, it has the sunness and it has some bitterness. Fresh pineapples to model with 25 ml of hibiscus ginger syrup. Just to model to get the juice out of the pineapple. The hibiscus syrup I put in, I added a little kick of ginger to represent the kick life gave me and how many times I got back up, even though it kicked me down. My senior bartenders used to bully me when I was a bar back. I've got also 15 ml of lime juice. And a dash of patient bitters, which represents the bitterness in the life. I've got a little bit sour, which is the passion fruit, which also represents the sourness life tastes sometimes. A little bit more. And now, the rum. What does this rum tell in my drink? Basically, I didn't have anything to talk about the rum. I'm very glad to make it to the finals in the Barman TV show. And I say a very good thank you to everyone that has made it possible. So I'm here using the rum as a sign of happiness. Yeah. And now, the shaking part. I call this drink Baku Biom. Baku Biom. The chicken in this drink, beautiful smell. Then I double strain to keep the ice chunks in the fruit particles in the fine strainer. We don't need it in the final drink. Before I present my drink, I would like to garnish with this garnish. It's purposely for the same aspect of the ingredients. It's got the bitterness, it's got the sweetness, it's got another bitterness, it's got another sweetness, another bitterness. So it's like the ups and downs in life. Before I present my drink to you, one more minute. Not actually one minute, two seconds. <laughs> this is the drink I call the one more time. Thank you very much.
So, Pat, take me through the cocktail. Just so that in my mind I can really see how it's going to look and just have an idea about how the flavors are going to play together and also how it actually builds to your legacy. The other competitions I like to told us not to limit ourselves in our ingredients whilst making drinks. So, I chose beetroot as my tropical ingredients for my cocktail with the help of pineapple to bring out some juice to soften the beetroot. Right, right. Okay, because beetroot can be a quite tannic. Yeah. Okay. And then I chose vodka as well, because it's a pure spirit to settle everything, just to blend everything up. The level of everything should go well balanced. Right. It's a little syrup I made back from Ghana. I just tried to make a syrup out of that potassium. Okay. I've been taking back days when my grandma used to send me. Nice. So I made I made something out of that potassium with Sobolo, the blend of local drink, which is now on train in right. Ghana, in Nigeria, right. with some spices. So okay. I want to end there with my rose water. Sure, sure. To give it a little lady-like something in there. You know, ladies and roses. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. Thank you so much for leaving your business shadow to be here with me to celebrate my legacy cocktail. I want to say thank you very much, everybody. As the saying goes, females are always left out when it comes to opportunities, compared to government, presidents, ministers. But I stand here today to say I'm proud to be a female. Why? Because I got a privilege to work with most of males in the bars, and I get the chance to learn from them. To start with, my legacy cocktail, I chose to start with beetroot, wild beetroot. Beetroot, I learned from my previous competitions that don't limit yourself when it comes to ingredients in your cocktails. I took the risk throughout my competition and I tried to use sour soap. It's an unusual ingredient in cocktails. So I took the decision to use that sour soap for a brilliant cocktail which worked out very nicely. So today I stand here to try the same risk. I'm gonna try with beetroot. Let's see what that comes out. My pineapple juice is gonna help my beetroot to come up with a, something nice, sour and sweet to give it a little muddle. I got a chance to work with homemade bitters. I made this myself after tasting a bitter that I don't like. Today I say I love these bitters. <laughs> so I'm gonna have 25 of that. It's been infused with Sobolo for my homeland. Rose water, as the saying goes, ladies and roses, few drops in there. I've got a Mambakadi, which has won 55 awards for being the best rum in the whole world. I'm gonna have 50 mils of that. My ice cubes. Helps me chill my glasses, always. This eyes being my best friend, it helps me go too. A champagne for the celebration, for how far I am today. Proud of myself. One, two, I'm gonna give it a double strain. Females are like, they are always sent to the kitchen to cook. I'm gonna float my celebration champagne. Right on the line of the ribbon. Right on the line of the ribbon. It takes time to settle, because it it's champagne. <laughs> Much low. OK, I got this for my granddad, this old school dix that it gave me on my way to Nigeria. He said I should make good use of it. So today, I'm going to make good use of it. I'm going to record all my journey on this dix. <laughs> Candles. And also, I'm gonna make a good use of this.
for you, my judges. Take us through the steps and the inspirations for your legacy cocktail for us today, please. Uh, my inspiration for my legacy cocktail is going to come from two classic cocktails, which is going to be the Sazerac. I love the Sazerac because it's actually the very first drink to be called a cocktail. So I always like the story behind it. The second one is Godfather. So I'm going to pick different ingredients from these two cocktails and blend them together to be able to make my legacy cocktail. I'm going to pick Amaretto from The Godfather. Okay. I'll pick a cognac and a bitters mm. from the Sazerac. Then I remember I used a bitter lemon before in a competition where I was supposed to use a tonic water and I got spelled. <laughs> so I remember the bitter lemon. So what's the, the dry ice is for you is significant of what? The significance of the dry ices. What I want to tell the upcoming bartenders about my legacy and my story is when you start making something, it doesn't look visual or beautiful. Sure. No one sees the back of it, but as soon as you make it to the top, everybody remembers the beauty of it. So this cocktail will be blur. Everybody will see it blurness. Then the beauty comes out and everybody remembers the beauty out of the drink. How are you going to present the cocktail? Hello, everybody. I'm here to present to you my legacy cocktail. But before I do that, I would like to talk about my story and how I started bartending. I was behind the TV one day watching, and I saw this young man. His name is Tapatio, and he was presenting a cocktail. When I was in secondary school, I used to be a showman. So then I can start my show through this job. So I looked for this guy, I traced him, I got his number, we got in touch, and we began from there. Then I became a bartender. Now, when kids meet, they talk about juices, pineapple, beetroots, and stuff like that. When normal men meet, they talk about beers. They want to drink beers and stuff like that. When real men meet, they talk about on the rocks, neat, tequila shots, and stuff like that. But when legendary men meet, they talk about champagne, wine, reserve brand. This is what I want to present to you today as my legacy cocktail. Now I have in my hand sugar and grated lemon zest. Let's look at what I'm going to do with this sugar and grated lemon zest. I'm going to rim and coat this glass. So you see what I'm doing? The lemon is going to give you an oily flavor and a sharp taste as soon as you taste the drink. I'm going to chill this glass. I'm going to tell you a brief story about how the word cocktail came into existence. My inspiration from this particular cocktail is coming from two particular drinks. One is called the Godfather, and the second one is called the Sazerac. The Sazerac is the very first drink to be called a cocktail. The very first day the Sazerac was made, it was made in a French egg cup, which was called the Coquiteur. But because the English couldn't pronounce the word cookie it became cocktail. The Godfather has amaretto in it. So I picked my amaretto from the Godfather. One pot, that's 25 mils. Voila, beautiful cut. And the Sazerac has a cognac and a bitters in it. I picked those two from there too. Like I said earlier on, real men, talk about shots and stuff like that. And legacy and legendary men talk about reserve brands. They don't do juices. What is juice for a legendary man like me? No, no way. Then, I'm going to bring this little. There's a saying that goes, Variety is the spice of life. I have absent. Don't forget, absent comes from the Sazerac as well. Just a little drop, 
not even up to five meals in there. Jägermeister, this is the only business in the world that has 56 ingredients in it. <laughs> not up to five meals as well. And this martini bianco was traditionally made for women. So, obviously, it's going to be in the middle and it will go for my female judge as a variety in the spice. <laughs> cool, I'll put in sugar syrup, 15 meals. Then, my lemon juice. Fifteen meals as well. Put in my ice. I'm going to stare like a professional. All right? This is how professionals stare. Can I get my bitter lemon, please? Sorry. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks. <laughs> Legendary men, legacy men, don't do juices. We don't go about making flowers and stuff like that. We mean real business. Simple, easy, and ready to go. I top up with my bitter lemon, just a little bit to balance the sweetness and the sourness. Now this is my chocolate bitters, and I want it to give a little sharp chocolate nuts taste a bit more. Voila, there you go, it's floating on top. About to present this drink. Easy, classic, ready to go. One, that's for you. Two, any of the men can fight about the flavor they want. A little bit of flavor to this drink. Dry ice that I originally proposed into this competition. Now, it's time for me to present the legendary drink, which tastes so amazingly good. And I present to you the legendary drink. Hi, my name is Colin Sari Appiah. I'm Johnny Caldwell. And I am Tanika Reeves. And, and we are the Cocktail Bandits. Global Single, Global Ambassador of Dilma Tea and founder of Peco Tea Liqueurs. I'm Gregory Buda at the Dead Rabbit in New York City. I'm Warren Bobro, the Cocktail Whisperer, and you're watching Barman TV. You're watching Barman TV. And you're watching the Barman TV. And we are here watching Barman TV. Log on to www.thebarmantv.com. We thought we'd open up the set so that we have people come and actually see and be surprised as we are at the, at the, the level, you know, of, uh, of detail and the sweat that these bartenders have put into developing their craft. I'm here with Brian. It looks like you're drinking Patience's drink. How's it going? Going great, man, so far, man. I'm just, uh, I'm just experiencing this drink, man. I saw her make it, and I couldn't wait to taste it, and here I am just uh, taking every sip, every second, and just enjoying it. Was, was it the rose petals <laughs> that got you? Was it the rose petals that got you? I was, I was saving it for Valentine's. So I am really having fun. I mean, her whole ensemble, her whole presentation with the drink was really good, and I mean, it just tastes as great as it looks. So I'm here with Langway. That's correct, Langway. Okay, and you've chosen Johnson's drink. What was it about Johnson's drink made you want to come to this bar? I mean, first and foremost, he has the key ingredients of a, of a mixologist, where he had a lot of communication, a lot of confidence, a lot of zeal, which makes you interested in coming to meet him. Um, the cocktail as well, I mean, the fact that it's got no juices, as he kept on saying, is a real man's drink. That attracted me to him as well. What's your name? Esosa. Esosa, lovely to meet you. And your name? I'm Rich. Rich. Uh, so what was it that drew you to Joel's cocktail? Um, I think his use of passion fruit and ginger. 
So I was really interested. So of all of the three cocktails, this one is the most sort of drinkable over and over and over. It really is. So you like to just keep on drinking. Yeah, but this one is really refreshing. It's something that you'd want to drink a lot. That's the end of the bar. The bar is now closing. You guys have literally got the last drinks. Look at her. She's like, she doesn't want to leave. The drinks are so good. The best bartenders in the world are no different from rock stars, movie stars, TV stars. The bar is your stage. It is time for you to come and showcase what you're made of. If I were you, as a bartender in Africa, learning to grow and learn from the best, it will change the way you bartend for the rest of your life. Myself, Tom Dyer, world champion flair bartender. Don't delay, sign up today. Make sure you log on to thebarmantv.com right now. Where your quest could begin. Joe! Thanks for calling. Well done, Thank well you. done, well done, Patience. Well done, Johnson. The quest that we asked for you for the legacy cocktail was to interpret all of your experiences and reflect that into a cocktail that best represents all of you. When you created your cocktail, I was really impressed that you brought the story of uh, your mother um, into your cocktail, but you've shown myself and of course your mum that, you know, bartending is a true profession. Thank you. Patience, I love the way that you brought a lot of the culinary into your cocktail and also your heritage, what your mother and your grandfather helped to build into uh, your cocktail creativity. You know, using beetroot is really, really risky. I think you did a brilliant job of doing that. And also, you made me feel old when you brought out the record. And you said, I don't know what this is, but my grandfather gave it to me. And I thought I would record my legacy on this. But beautifully done, well done, thank you very much. And Johnson, well done, you did so well, sir. I really appreciated the fact that, you know, you talked about the story of all the upsets and your ups and downs that you had previously uh, to this competition. And, you know, something that I learned uh, from your cocktail as well was, you know, don't read a book by its cover, you know, look beyond that. And your cocktail also delivered a very, very good execution, a great reflection of yourselves. And all of you should be really, really happy that you've actually created cocktails which stand the test of time, which go beyond these four walls in this room and should resonate around the world. I wish you all the best of luck. And I'm gonna pass it over to the judges to decide which one of you wins the Marvin's TV Barman of the Year. Thank you, Gordon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, judges. Pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Always. In third place for the Barman TV season one, please put your hands together for Joe. In second place for the Barman TV season one, please put your hands together for Pat! Yeah. Well done. Congratulations. Congrats. Well done. I'm very happy to be the first barman in the Barman TV series show in Africa. This in my left hand is the World Flare Association yellow belt with a new grading system with a world champion, three times champion, Tom Dyer, I was able to make this belt. And I'm so really happy. I'm proud of this TV show. I don't even know what to say. I'm so happy, I'm overjoyed. This show has really helped me 
and it has changed my life as a bartender and I'm going to move from place to places. So everybody, watch out for Johnson. I'm coming out there to show to the world Africa has got some great talents when it comes to bartending. I hope that the lesson that we take out of it is that the industry is too big for one company or one brand to want to take on the challenge of developing it on their own. Collaboration is key. If you're confident about your brand, then you should be confident enough to put it side by side your competition. Yeah, and be comfortable that it will be picked up on board. Season one was really, you know, a learning experience for us, figuring out how, I mean, coming from concept to execution, and all the learnings that happened along the way. In looking around and trying to find references when we were designing this, we, we couldn't find any genre of television to fit this into. So I'm confident enough to say that, you know, we've created a new genre. So we're taking all the learnings and uh, we're going to make it bigger and better.